What's up everyone? It's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am just so happy to have you here with me. Make sure that you take a moment to look down below in the description box because that's where you're going to find a link to where you can purchase the pattern. I'm going to have links to where I purchase my materials, my vinyls, my zippers, my hardware. If I'm using it, you're going to have a link to where you can find it. Today, we're going to be making things with y'all before we get started this um it does have a lot of pieces but don't fret the pieces always go together so well with shambhala so don't don't not do it because of the pieces the pieces are they're cool and they always fit perfectly now <clears throat> really quick i want to say this about your connector you saw what she used and i'm sure at this point you've seen a lot of different examples from the testers but I just want you to know that you don't have to use what you see. You can get creative with it and use whatever you like. So I think I may wind up using this one. I wasn't at first because I, I wasn't going to include black. But now that I have black, I think that um, I may go ahead and go with this. But before I realized that I, had, I was going to use black, I was getting some other ideas worked out because this is the only connector that's shaped like this that I have. You can, do, do, you can make modifications. So an option I was thinking was this which is a grommet that has a D-ring attached to it already. It's available on my website and it's, um, it's an alternative that I could have connected right here. <clears throat> and then I would have just attached my handle to a swivel hook and then place it right there. Another option that I was thinking of is you can add a bridge. I was going to add this bridge. I wasn't going to add it this way. I was going to add it going up and down. And again, I would attach my um, handle or my strap to a swivel hook and then I can connect it right there. So just don't get discouraged if you don't have specific types of hardware. I know they can get super expensive and we don't just always have certain things on hand. Just dig around and see what you have and you can make some modifications and make it work for you, okay? Um, but that being said, all of this hardware is on my website, uh, lovelolalooks.com. There's a link down below for that. <clears throat> so what I did was for, I want to show you how the pieces connect. So this is everything that goes on the front. Now, the piece right here is your front panel center. You've already seen a lot of people are using webbing for this contrast band center. They have been modifying it with webbing instead. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use webbing. But my webbing is two inches. I also have one and a half inches um, available, but I just really wanted this to use this webbing. So mine is two inches, so there's not none of this bottom piece is going to show. And I'm okay with that. That's not a big deal. We've got our front panel size that you're going to cut mirrored. And then we've got our two contrast bands, which are going to be cutting four of those total. Two on the front, one on the, they're each mirrored, and uh, two on the back. We've got our contrast band top. You're going to be cutting two of those for the front and the back. Now, I have not interfaced any of these materials because I am going to wait until I have got them all connected. And then I'm going to cut one big piece of interfacing and or stabilizer and get that attached all at one time. My bottom, I have attached my interfacing and stabilizer, and I just placed a piece of um, stabilizer. I use leather underneath here, and then on top of it, I placed my Sew Fuse Plus, and I got that fused down. And I've also interfaced my side pieces, my side gusset pieces, with Sew Fuse Plus. So now go ahead and make all the marks that you need to make before we get started. Also make sure that you have found the midpoint of everything because that's going to just make our life easier as we get going. 
Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for this bag. Um, we've got some marks to make on our bottom piece, on the front piece where we're going to be putting our hardware. All right, so I'm going to go and get those marks done myself, and then I'll meet you in a couple of minutes to get this going. All right, I've gotten my marks put on for my connector. I went ahead and used my pattern piece to get my purse feet put in. I'm actually going to start with my piping because I have my, uh, my little zipper foot on right now because of what I did last. So I definitely feel like I need to do this while my zipper foot is on. So if you're doing piping, I've already made my piece. Now I will say that I made my piping material that I folded over my cording one inch instead of one and one fourth because I'm using this very tiny cording. Can you see it? It's super duper tiny. It's one eighth. I feel like it's, it's tinier than one eighth, but um, I love it because I like a little piping. I got it from Amazon down below this video there is a link to my Amazon storefront where I will put where I have all of the things that I use so you can find it there and because it's so thin I decreased my piping cord to one fourth of an inch that way it will fit exactly at one fourth inch for my seam allowance. You can keep it the same way. I like to live dangerously and I like it to be right on the money. So that's why mine is one inch. You can definitely leave it one and one fourth inch. If you don't have a zipper foot or a piping foot, I suggest you invest in one because it really does make a difference when you are doing piping, even a welting foot. I have a welting foot that works perfectly, but I'm too lazy to put it on. But it's okay because I have a really thin foot that will do the job as well. All right. So I've used my gusset piece to mark that. And I'm just going to start pinning on the side. Actually, I'm going to put double-sided tape on here. Because it's just so much easier. All right, I'm gonna grab my piping. Line it up at that first mark. And get it attached all the way around. When you're doing piping, I recommend that you use thread that is the same color as your piping, just so that if there's any chance of it showing, it, 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 it will just blend in. So to make this, all I did was cut my material and then I put my cord right down the middle and then I closed it up and then I went and sewed right across, right along the cord to get that. When you get to the corners, it does help if you put a few snips. So I will go back and do that once I get this attached. Give it a little bend to loosen it up a little bit. Okay. And when I get to the mark, I'm going to cut it. And then I'm just going to let it veer off to the side a little bit at that mark, bam. Same thing to the other side, bam. And we wanna get as close as we can to that piping. Alexa, turn music on.
look pretty good. Like it, like it, like it. Okay, so now I'll just repeat that to the other one and then I'll be right back. All right, here we go, friend. So here's our front pieces. We have that center piece and our two side pieces. Grab one of your side pieces and place it so that they are right sides touching. And we're going to get these sewn together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've got it attached, we want to open it up, flatten out those seams from the back. And now we're going to go and add a top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance on both sides of that seam. Okay? If you want to put double sided tape to keep these down, you can. I am just going to um, hold it as I sew. Alright? Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Place it right sides together. And go and get it sewn at 1 4 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so if you're going to be making your contrast band with fabric, what you would do is cut that fabric out and then you would make a line down the middle long way and you would fold in just like um, just like if you're making a strap, you know? And then once you fold the whole thing in, you would then place it down the center and that will be your strap. Now I'm thinking maybe I should do this one. Ooh, I don't know. What should I do, y'all? Does that match? No, that doesn't match. I would have to change my side pieces. Oh, I don't feel like changing all that. Okay, I'm going to keep it like it was. Okay. So, I am going to... Place this this down the center. I'm gonna use a little double-sided tape to keep it on. All right, and now I'm going to go and sew around all each end of this um, webbing. Okay, so all four sides. Okay, once you've got your band put on, you want to grab your contrast band side pieces and what you want to do is make sure that the piece that has that little notch on it is at the top then you're going to line up the very tip at the top and the bottom And then she wants you to get it at it from the bottom and the top going in. I'm going to use tape because this is my life now. I don't have to apologize for that, do I? Okay, now we're going to go and get this sewn on at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. And while I'm over there, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to my other side. You do the same thing. Okay, so once we have these attached, we're going to just fold that out. And our seam allowance is going to be going behind the side piece. Now we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to top stitch on our side pieces at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we've got both sides attached. We're gonna grab our top contrast band and we're gonna place it where it's right sides together. 
match it up at the middle point. So I did go ahead and fold this in half and find my new midpoint. Okay, match it up at the midpoint. And then match it up going out from there. And now we're gonna get this sewn on at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that attached, you're gonna fold that up. And the seam allowance is going to be behind your top panel piece. And now we're gonna go and get a top stitch added at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's get our back panel done. We have a back panel bottom that's in lining. Go ahead and place double-sided tape along the top of that. We've got our back zipper pocket and we have cut a lining and an exterior for that. Go ahead and place double-sided tape along the top of both of those pieces. And we've got our zipper. Oh yeah, we've also got our um, back top piece. Do not get that confused with the top contrast band, okay? This contrast band top, that's something different. This is the other piece. This is the back panel top, so just make sure you don't get those mixed up. You want to put a piece of double-sided tape along the bottom of this back con contrast band. We're going to start with our back zipper pocket, the exterior one. So that's this. We're going to grab our zipper. And we want to place our zipper, our back, our back zipper pocket exterior is right side up and our zipper is going to be right side facing down and just get it centered on top now grab your back zipper pocket the lining and we want it to be right side facing down and place it right on top of the other piece all right press it really good and now, using your zipper foot, you want to get this on on at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Oh, I gotta change my foot again. Blah. Okay. Now we're going to just flip it all the way around. Press that down in the front and the back. And now we're gonna top stitch right on top of this exterior piece at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now grab your back panel, the top piece, and we're going to place it right side facing down, right on top of that zipper. All right, press that down. Once you have that attached, flip it over and grab your back zipper pocket lining and press that on the other side. Now let's go and stitch both of those together at 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's Press that up, and we're gonna get a top stitch right on this pink material. And then while we're at the machine, we're gonna go ahead and baste around this bottom area. So all of these pockets should be attached. I'm going to trim down my lining pockets just a tiny bit. I feel like it's gonna help me later when I go to do my bias tape, or not bias tape, when I go to attach this to my gusset and I'm attaching my piping, I feel like there's just a little bit too much. So if I take off about one eighth of an inch on the sides, I think that's going to help me when I'm dealing with 
all of those materials together. You don't have to do this. This is just something that I'm going to try out. Okay, so now I'm going to top stitch on here and baste everything else together. All right, I went ahead and put my zipper tag on. Now I'm going to trim that extra zipper, zipper, <laughs> zipper out of the way. And now we're going to grab our two. This pink is so pretty. I feel like the lighting isn't doing it justice. It is just the prettiest like baby doll. Barbie pink. Okay. Um, grab your contrast pieces. Remember the piece that has a little slant that goes towards the top. Pieces are not adding up. Huh, I don't know what I did, but my back panel piece is a little bit shorter than, than the front. Get those attached at one fourth of an inch seam allowance, and then go back and open it up and top stitch like before. And then you're gonna get your top piece added, just like before, that top band that goes on here, and once you get that added. All right, I got my sides on, and now I'm going to take my top contrast piece and place it right sides touching and get that attached at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to take my interfacing, my Stofuse Plus, and I'm going to head over to my heat press, and I'm going to get this attached to both of these panels. All right, I'll be back in just a second. Y'all, I am so mad. So I was going to use this as my connector. Y'all, I'm so mad. So I was going to use this as my connector because I felt like the black just tied in perfectly. The light is weird, so it's hard to see it, but um, yeah, the lighting is so weird. When I sew at night, it starts getting funny. Okay, so anyway, yeah, this is what I was going to use. But just now when I went to get all of my pieces together, I only have two left, and I need two for the back. So then I was like, maybe I'll just put those two in the front, and then put these two on the back. But then I realized that those bridges are not big enough for this webbing, because I'm gonna be using this webbing as my strap. I'm just gonna fold it in half. It's too, it doesn't fit. So I'm like, oh my God. So now I'm trying to think of something. I had to, I had to get some wine. That's how frustrated I am. <laughs> okay, so I'm back and I think I have an idea. It might be a little ghetto, <laughs> but I think it's gonna work. It's either going to be ghetto fabulous or it's going to be like dope. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is attach these. And I'm going to, like I said, I was going to fold my webbing in half for my straps to make it one inch because this is two inch webbing. And I think what I'm going to do is sew my webbing, you know, in half like I was going to do. And then I'm going to get some um, tubing and stick some tubing right like maybe like uh one inch long not very long at all and stick it in the very end so that i can shove it into this piece that i have and then i'll be able to connect this to those pieces i think that's what i'm gonna do because i don't know what else to do honey i need something i'm so mad at myself i actually just placed an order for more of these so they'll be coming in soon but soon ain't gonna help me tonight right Oh, Ray, get it together. But I think this is going to be dope, actually. So sometimes the best ideas come from desperation, right? All right, so I'm going to work on this really quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I have done is I folded these in half, and I sewed along the open end from the beginning to the end. And then on the opposite side, I started sewing up about... um about one and a half about one inch i don't know why i just felt like that was the thing to do 
And then I took this phone that I have. It is three over 16 inch, six over 32 um, foam welt cord. It should be in my, down below in my description box, I have a, a link to my Amazon storefront and I have everything that I use in there. I do get um, a small kickback for that. So if you do use it, I do appreciate that. But anyways, I've cut the, these into like one, one and a half inch pieces. And I'm going to just stick them inside of the end. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get three or four in. I cut four just in case. Okay, looks like I can get four in. But four may not be allow my screws to get in. So I'm going to do three. Because these um, this hardware comes with two screws and they're really long. So I need to be able to get them all the way in. So I've got three in, move it around, there we go. And I'm gonna just slide it in here. Yes, it fit. Let's see, and I want my handles to be like this. Yes. So I'm going to make it so that my holes are in the back. I do have these on my website if you're interested. This is pretty cool. I've never done it like this and I don't know what just popped in my head. When I have to find a way to just make something happen, I swear that's when I get the best ideas because I actually really... I'm liking the way this looks. Get in there. And I'm doing it so that it, the tubing is not sticking up much farther than this tube goes. I kind of want it to align with that. So I'm going to cut off what's extra down here. Again, I'm putting it in so that the holes go towards the back. Okay, so let's get these bridges attached. I'm just going to take my screw and place it through the washer and put a piece of Pelon Peltec 70 underneath it and place it through the holes. Now, when you get these holes done, make sure you use your ruler to make sure that it's straight. And it's going to be three and one eighth of an inch down and one and five eighth of an inch in that's where you can put your top hole and then from there just use your ruler to keep it straight okay once i've got this in i'm going to place my bridge on top Kind of easier to do one at a time. Once I get it screwed in about halfway, then I'll go ahead and get the other one in. Okay, y'all. I did it, and guess what? I love it. <laughs> I'm not even mad at it. That's dope. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. I'm not mad at all. Okay, so go ahead and get your name tag put on if you want to do that. Your label, name tag, whatever. Um, when you do your bridges, make sure you measure your holes before you start poking holes because I did not and I have a little bit of puckering going on because of that. But it is what it is. I wasn't about to make a whole new panel. But um, that's what I get for sewing late at night. I start messing, messing up. But anyway, grab one of your panels. I'm going to do my front. I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Okay. 
My front panel is right side facing up. I'm gonna grab my bottom. I have gone ahead and put my feet in. If you wanna do that, do it. My bottom is right side facing down. I'm gonna match it up and get it pinned. All right, I'm gonna get this sewn together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's fold our seam allowance towards the bottom. And now we're gonna go and top stitch on our bottom piece at 1 8 of an inch. Panel is right side facing up. Bottom is right side facing down. Right. Just like before, we're gonna go and sew this at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to flip it over and sew top stitch on the bottom at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, let's get our gusset on. It's looking so good. Ah! Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mark the midpoint of your gusset if you haven't, and the midpoint of your bottom. The right side's touching. You may need to clip around the curve to keep everything in line. You already know me. I'm gonna get some double-sided tape applied because it just makes my life so easy. I'm addicted. I am addicted. I need to go to, what do they call it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna make up a class for people that are addicted to double-sided tape. I can't stop. I wanna use it on everything. And this little one eighth of an inch tape is perfect because it doesn't get in the way. I don't gotta worry about it peeping out of my seams or anything. I'm hooked. Okay. Pull this off. Oh my god, you hear my baby down there with her friend Lola? It's two Lolas. My baby Lola and her friend name is Lola. She's spending the night. They are turnt. Okay. So I'm gonna place this right side down. I'm gonna match up the midpoint first. Then we're going to reach up and match up the corners. And then we're gonna go in from there. I'm gonna do match up my bottom a little bit more right until I get to that curve area and then I'm going to go back to the top and match it up from the top that way if there's any adjusting that needs to be done it'll be done in the curve area Again, if you need to, you can cut some notches in the gusset. Fits pretty perfect though. You should be good. Didn't need to make any kind of adjustments. Shambhala is always good for that. I don't know what wizard wizardry can't even talk she's got going on but she has perfected the art of these shapes all meeting exactly where they need to fit that front panel was just fantastic it doesn't even matter if it's curved she's got it going on kudos to sammy i want to be like her when i grow up <laughs> all right i'm matching up the other side at the top
All right, and now we're going to go and sew this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. You should have your zipper foot or your um, your welt foot or you know the foot that you need for your piping. All right, so we've got both of our gussets on. I went ahead and trimmed down my seam allowance except for the first inch at the top. I left that the way it is so that we'll be able to open those later when we get this attached. So let's go ahead and get this turned out. Love it. All right. Oh, and she did say to cut some um, notches, like some little snips around the curve before you turn the bag out, okay? Now grab those little side pieces that we have that we cut out for, two of them mirrored. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'd have been mad at myself. Okay, and so we're going to lay it against the side, the long flat side, the long straight side. We're going to match it up so that right sides are touching. And get this pinned together. All right, and we're going to sew this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Maybe. Hmm? That's okay. I was surprised that it will be you too. What? The play with it, so I, I make the thing and then I give it to you because it's a surprise. Okay. And Can I work while you do it? Huh? Can I work while you do it? Yeah. Okay. Just quickly. Because you order Okay, shh. Okay, once you've got that added, we're going to fold it open. And now we're gonna add a top stitch along this little side piece at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and once I have that done, okay, and once I have that done, I'm gonna repeat the same thing to the other side and also to my other panel. I'm gonna get those side pieces um, added on and top stitch just like we just did, okay? Okay. All right, friends, before we move on, let's grab our zipper that's gonna go along the top of the bag. And we wanna get a little, um, we wanna curve this out. So I'm gonna reach down about half of an inch and I'm going to pinch so that wrong sides are touching. And when you do that, it's going to naturally kind of curve over. You can go to your machine and add a stitch if you like. I'm just going to do it by hand easier to me that way repeat the same thing to the other side and you're just bending it so that it's at like a um what is that a 90 degree angle alrighty once we have our zipper done we're gonna get this attached so First, we have to make a couple of marks. Grab your main lining pieces, and on the front panel, or the panel that you want to be your front, on your front panel piece, you want to measure and make a mark two and three fourths. On your front panel piece, you want to measure and make a mark two and three-fourths of an inch in on the left side. On the right side, you're going to measure and make a mark two inches in. On your back panel piece, you want to measure and make a mark two inches in on the left side. And on the right side, you want to measure and make a mark that's two and three-fourths of an inch in. Now, 
from those marks, I put a piece of double-sided tape because it's just easier to me. You don't have to do that. Basically, what we're going to be doing is basting our zipper on between those places. So I'm going to start with my back panel. Sight. Okay, so I am going to start with my front panel. Pay attention to which panel you're doing because it's going to affect how, which direction your bag opens and closes. So I've got my front panel piece. The measurement is two and three fourths on the left and two inches on the right. And I'm going to place my zipper right where those marks are. And I'm keeping the end of my zipper in line with the top of, your, of this um, panel piece. I'm pulling my zipper a little tight as I do it because I don't want it to be loose and start to bunch. So I feel like if I pull it tightly, it's going to help it to be where it needs to be. That's my thinking anyway. <laughs> Whether or not that's true, who knows. All right, and once we get to where it ends, just give it a little tug down. I'm gonna pin it just to make sure it stays out of the way. Oh, I'm gonna pin it if I find a pin, which I'm not finding, so uh, yeah. Where would you be? All right, I got one. All right, so I'm just going to tuck this down a little bit and pin it. All right, if you need to pin it, go ahead and pin it. We're going to go and base this on starting and stopping at the marks that we made at one eighth of an inch single balance. Okay, now she did mention that you may want to make a few clips along the curve to help everything stay where it needs to be. So if you need to do that, go ahead and do that. Next, we're going to grab one of our lining contrast bands. And we're gonna place it so that it's right side down. So our main lining is right side facing up. Our zipper is right side facing up. And now our contrast band is right side facing down. I'm gonna go ahead and find the center. Go ahead and find the center on both sides. All right, and I'm gonna place this contrast band right side facing down. It's gonna seem weird because it's, this part is going like this and the bottom is going like that, but it's fine. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a tape again because it's just so much easier. I am just, I'm a lazy little thing, ain't I? God bless. Okay, and this time when we sew it together, we're going to be sewing it at one, um, ugh. <laughs> this time we're going to be sewing it at one fourth of an inch seam allowance, okay? All right, so this is right side facing down. Match up the middle point first. All right. This time I am going to add a few little nips to help it lay flat. Okay, now you want your seam allowance to go down. And now we're going to sew, we're going to do a top stitch and we're going to do it underneath the zipper. Okay. So it's gonna, we're going to be top stitching on the main panel and it's underneath the zipper. And we're doing that at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and in case I didn't mention, we did start all the way from one end for this top stitch, completely to the other side. Now once you've got that done, you're going to repeat the same thing to the other side. Lay your zipper. Panel piece is right side facing up, your zipper is now right side facing down and you're going to line it up at the marks that you made just like before. All right, and repeat the same steps that we just did to get that attached and top stitched. 
Once I got both of my top contrast bands added, I went ahead and put my zipper pull on. So when you do your zipper pull, just take your two panel pieces and place them right sides touching. That way you can grab the end piece and make sure that nothing is twisted. Once you get your zipper on, you're going to just tuck that in. Make sure that it's not twisted before you move on to the next step because um, we're about to close this baby up. So we're going to tuck that zipper in and out of the way. We'll just stick it right here in this pocket. And we're going to match up the sides. and get it sewn together. We're going, going to be boxing the corners up later. So we are sewing down the sides and then we're also going to sew the bottoms together. But when you do it, leave enough room for you to turn the bag through. So, you know, leave about maybe five inches or so, whatever you're comfortable with to get the bag turned. If you have a little overage right here from that contrast band, it's fine. Just ignore it for now and we'll snip it off later. And when we start this at the top, we're going to start sewing with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then when you get down about an inch, you're going to start increasing it to be about a half of an inch seam allowance. And that's just going to help the lining not to be saggy inside of your bag. Same thing with the bottom. Um, the bottom, I'm just going to sew at half of an inch seam allowance across the whole thing that I sew, stopping to leave an opening for the bag. All right, let's box our corners really quick. So all we're gonna do is reach to that point and gently tug it open. Now, really quick, I did trim down my seam allowance except along the bottom and along the top because we wanna have those to be able to be opened when we start joining other pieces together. So I did not trim it at the bottom and at the corners. So I'm gonna gently pull it and I'm gonna line up the midpoint or the seam of the bottom and the seam of the side. Line those up in the middle right there. And I'm just gonna open my seam allowance on both sides, just like that. Repeat the same thing to the other side. And I'm gonna sew both of those sides closed at half of an inch seam allowance. Okay, let's get this final assembly done. We have our exterior facing the right side out. Our lining is inside out. We're gonna place our exterior inside and make sure that your triple pocket, that should be towards the back of your bag, okay? We're gonna just stuff that in. I'm gonna start matching up the midpoints in the front. in the back. Okay, and then line up the side. Opening up your seam allowance. And then you can just kind of fit everything in and um, clip, clip it all the way around. Opening up your seams wherever you come to an area that have seams. Okay, once you've got it clipped all the way around, we're gonna go and get that sewn on, uh, sewn together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. this out of the way. There we go.
alrighty. I have <clears throat> got that connected and I trimmed down around my curves a little bit. And now we are going to turn this out through our lining. Beautiful. Okay, friends, we're almost done. How dope is that triple pocket? That is so cool. Got all this pocket space going on, all these different compartments. Very dope. All right, so let's, well, first let's close this up really quick got your bottom closed up you can go ahead and get that stuff in and then we want to find our there we go you're gonna have to pull it out a little bit to get the shape it might be easier to go in and Get that pushed out before you close up the bottom. Either way, you'll get it. It might just take a little bit longer. But you want to go through and smooth out your seams. I'm going to be using my handy dandy tool to flatten my seams out. It does an awesome job. It's for fob keys, but I use it for this. It works great. I have it in my uh, down below in my um, description box. I have an Amazon storefront where I have all of the tools that I use in my videos. You can just follow the link straight to it. I do get a, a small kickback for that. So if you use the link, again, I do appreciate it. it just helps me to fund my channel. Okay, so we're just going to go around and get our seams smoothed out really good. Once we do that, we're going to grab our clips and we're going to go around the entire top, get these clipped, and then we're going to do a top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Alright, and once we get that top stitch, we are pretty much done. Oh, she is pretty. Oh my goodness. Love it. Okay, let's get our zipper end put on. I totally forgot about that. Uh, cut it to about right here. That's good. All right, there we go. Get this screwed in. You already know I have this on my website if you like it. Lovelolalooks.com. I know you're sick of me saying it, but I gotta say it because if I don't, who will? Links for everything are down below in the video. You know, if I don't promote myself, who's going to do it? <laughs> I used to hate doing it, but now I'm like, you know what? I have all this hardware. I need somebody to buy it. <laughs> all right, there we go. And we're done. It's late, so I'm going to go to bed, and then I'll get some pictures for you tomorrow. Absolutely love it. Good job. Oh, let's get my, oh, gosh, stretch handles. 
Oh gosh, yes. I need to go, let's see, which way is the front? Like that. Oh my gosh. Don't you love when a mistake makes you do something and then you absolutely love it? I love it like this. I'm glad that that happened. Oh my gosh. Too dope. Let me get some pictures. Love it. All right, y'all, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. You can find me on all of the social media platforms. And I'll also go ahead and add all of that stuff in my, um, I'll add a link to all of that stuff um, in the video description box as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.